Hello and welcome to A Bright Future Fitness Podcast. I'm on with Andy Hamilton. Uh, just introduce yourself a little bit if you want. Hi right, guys, I'm Andy Hamilton. I've been uh, roped into doing this with A Bright Future Fitness, so let's see what he's got. <laughs> um, right. Um, so we're going to go back to kind of childhood or whatever um what was your first kind of equipment that you kind of picked up or sport that you did like at a young well, age well the first sport that i picked up was when i used to box and obviously that's completely different training to weightlifting but that was my first ever insight into any sort of training regime or yeah. like lifting anything like that a lot of freaking body weight and running oh, and shit. Lots of cardio, lots of body weight. It was all. It was more endurance, really, just to yeah. push your body to its physical limits. Did you used to go to Biddeford one? Yeah, so I actually went to Mill Road in Barnstable. That was where I, I, I used to. Yeah, 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 I know where that is. Was it good there? Yeah, it was a good gym, to be fair, and good trainers and that. It was a good crack, to be honest. Um... But like I said, that was my first introduction to anything to do with fitness or exercise. And it was good because you got to just hit 10 bells of, out of whatever you wanted. <laughs> I know. I, I, I done loads of stuff kind of when I was younger. But like I did boxing at, at like 14, 15. Yeah. I used to do it for Biddeford. And um, literally all I used to like is going in and sparring. Yeah, that was the same as me. I did enjoy it. Back then, I did enjoy the runs. Oh, well, I've always hated absolute, running. I was an absolute whippet, so... <laughs> That's what I mean. I've never, I've, never been a, I've never been small, really. No, I know <laughs> so, you haven't. So trying to run up fucking Bridge Street, the massive... Is it, is it Bridge Street? The massive hill in Biddeford? Yeah, yeah. I remember um, one of them. We had to run up and down that doing stu like a stupid amount of times i was puking and everything mate yeah um so yeah going back again um so when was the first time you kind of picked up any sort of dumbbell equipment <laughs> it's a funny story the first time i ever went to a gym i went to the leisure center and i got roped into it by a couple of guys that had been training they had quite a lot a few years experience compared to me i was a complete newbie yeah. but i still rocked in there 56 kilos wife beat her on and then <laughs> bang got chucked with a second set of 25s in my hand trying to bench them i tore my shoulder <laughs> so i just well, that, you tore it gym. straight away as soon as you started literally just complete i uh, screamed in agony i've still got the problem now Fuck. Um, but that's the that's why I always say to people never ego lift like the guys that I went with have been training for quite a while they knew what they were doing I didn't have a bloody clue no so you just thought oh I'll jump in with it <laughs> I just thought yeah I'll give that a go don't look that hard like just pushing it in it nah so much more to it than that but no it, it, it's a injury that's actually affected me still to this day fucking hell um right um so after your boxing and everything, what kind of come um, kind of after this? Because um, I know that obviously you re had a role in the army. That's, that's when I got into weight training properly. Yeah. Well, that's what, because, that's, what, that's what I thought. Yeah, because I've always had like a lean frame. I was, I've always been small, but that was to do with a childhood illness that I had. Because yeah. um, obviously I had acute lymphoblastic leukemia. So me putting on weight and things like that has always been a massive, massive struggle. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't know. Um, so when I went in the army, uh, you have to carry a lot of weight. Yeah. And basically I got the weight put on my back and I just crumbled like a pretzel. 
Probably because like, yeah. you were the it's probably because you were the smallest, and they're like, right? Uh, yeah, I was. Because someone I know, uh, he's mass. He's like quite big now. He's been in. He was in the army. He's like forties, fifty. Yeah. Now. Um, he was like a small, tiny guy, and they just piled him up. Yeah. Well, I just crumbled like a pretzel. So I had to do the army training, but then every night. I would go and I'd spend an hour and a half doing basically just as heavy lifting as I could in the gym. Yeah. Just to get my physical strength up, just so I could carry the weight to go and do the tabs, to to go and do the exercise that they were having us doing because I didn't want to be the weak one. Yeah. But then I got addicted to it. Yeah. And I found I enjoyed, yeah, in the army, you've got to do runs, you've got to do fitness, you've got to be, your endurance has got to be like right up there. It's a high level of fitness. But it was the the feeling that I got from lifting weights. What yeah. it did for my mental state, what it did for my physical state. I mean, I'll never forget, I come off a train about four months after leaving, going to the army, and me and my ex-wife walked past each other because she dropped about four stone and I've been stacked on about two and a half stone of muscle. <laughs> we didn't even recognise each other. Right <laughs> so <laughs> it was one of them. Um, so kind of fast forward in a little bit, um, kind of what's your goals with kind of training wise, um, kind of at the moment and kind of after lockdown, because I know you've got quite a lot of equipment anyway, so yeah. you can still quite train very good. Well, I mean, before lockdown, I was just doing what most people do, was just going to the gym, doing a workout. Obviously, I have quite a physical job as well. Yeah. So the lockdown for me and with the equipment that I've actually managed to get has basically stripped me back to old school weightlifting. Obviously, yeah. your squat, your bench, your deadlift, minute standing military presses, big heavy compound lifts. And for me, like I've never I've never barbell bench really. I've always used dumbbells, but that's to do with like the, the fear yeah, of my shoulders yeah. going again. Yeah. But I'm getting more progress and more gains from what I've got at home than I have in the gym for the last five months. Yeah. Do, so, do, you, do you feel that's because you've just focused on dumbbells and like the additional machines? Yeah, it's just because I've gone away on from big. Like big. I didn't realize how weak my lower back was, and now incorporating like RDLs, deadlifts, like sumo squats, front squats, all those proper heavy leg yeah. training exercises of strength from my lower back which is actually going to help me within my actual job and yeah. things like that but i've been quite lucky because obviously i'm quite strict with my diet and nutrition and things like that. i'm good at planning all that stuff but i've i mean i've put on 3.5 kilos in four days and i'm just progressing and i've got everything logged and i'm just going up and up and up yeah uh, it's working for me because i've trained for so long but i've never trained with this style and they yeah. say you should change your training up every six weeks anyway. But the fact that I'm doing things that I've never done, which people have told me to do, but I've always thought I knew better. Yeah. And until you put in that position of like, this is what you've got, make it work, adapt, overcome, improvise. It's actually been good. And obviously being at home and on lockdown, I've got all the time in the world to cook all my food. And it's yeah. made me realize how essential it is that you, it's all food. It's all nutrition. Yeah. Like even if you want to lose weight or you want to gain weight, you've got to get those meals. I used to think I ate a lot when I was working. Now being a lockdown, being at home twenty four seven, I weren't eating nowhere near enough. I was probably uh, a quarter of what I'm eating. Um, yeah, because that's what I'm. Yeah, because that's what I'm seeing with a lot of people. Who, have kind of the right equipment, and they're like, oh, I'm not eating they took a rest because they were struggling to get equipment and different other stuff. And mm. they've managed to get it now. And where they've gone from being so focused on machines and different other stuff to just pure gone back to basics. Yeah. Their body looks even different. And it's like, it is. And that's like what we, what we were talking about the other day when I was saying to you about like the gyms and that, um, obviously what 24 seven was like, and I'm training in a commercial gym like yeah. at the moment. And I've now realized that I want to go back to just doing like a proper plate loaded bodybuilding gym with that yeah. atmosphere. 
and even just being able to have the music loud, it makes a, such a difference to the training and your goals that you achieve. Yeah. And I think I've gone backwards in sense because I've gone into a commercial gym and yeah. a franchise and it's, it, it's just completely different. <coughs> completely different. Choking on my rice cracker. <laughs> um, I found that when I, um, when I moved to London, the nearest kind of proper bodybuilding gym was fucking far too far for me on public transport to be even bothering. Yeah. So I was, in a, with your body so I was in a commercial you gym. You, you need that kind of gym. Yeah, because like, in a commercial, you gym, a commercial gym, you're just going to get wins that. Well, when it, it's like you start doing like heavy deadlifts and heavy shit and people are looking at you weird and it's like, this, yeah. you shouldn't be looking at me weird. Like this is not, this is what people should be doing. No, and, I agree with that. <laughs> um, and obviously... But that's, where, but that's where I think it goes from being a bodybuilding community and a bodybuilding um, focus to just being a fitness person. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a difference that I've realised now for myself that I'm in a fitness gym, I'm not in a bodybuilders or a weightlifters gym, and even the people that I mean, yeah, you get a couple people, but the minority, eighty percent of it is just fitness. It's not just, lifting. Just do a bit of machines and do their do their cardio and do their yeah. classes or whatever. Yeah, and that's it not really like taking it to kind of an extreme of bodybuilding or kind of no, same nah, not it's not the same atmosphere at all is it no nah, no one there it's quite nice because people are quite nice in commercial gyms and stuff oh but, yeah it's very clean and tidy and the air conditioning's always on point and you yeah. get a cup of coffee downstairs but <laughs> if you start <laughs> shouting and you start lifting and you start banging stuff you soon get told off oh <laughs> I I think I would have been gone like I yeah well and that's and that's something that I've realised yeah, that's, that's... after lockdown that's an adjustment that I'm going to make and especially with stripping myself back to old school training and the results that I'm getting personally like I know that I want if I put myself in that kind of atmosphere with machines but obviously plate loaded machines and more old school stuff yeah. rather than just a lot of the new machines, yes, they're so smooth running. And it's essentially like it's lifting the weight for you. You need to be stripped back so you've actually got to put that hard graft in. Yeah. I always, find very... that, I always find that quite a lot of, like, shall we say, like new machines with pins. Yeah. Like you said, it feels like it's taking the weight. Like, yeah. Because you can do a lot more, I think. As you go oh, yeah. on. on the little on the little dial it tells you you're lifting a lot more but you're not actually lifting, because it's so smooth and so easy and yeah. it's not like even when you're doing your shoulder presses on a machine it's not like doing it on a barbell now where you're uh, it and straight um, away you're like right there we go that was <laughs> yeah. and that's what i've learned and like uh, i'm i've i don't know how long lockdown's going to carry on for so i've got all this time to enjoy the gains with the equipment that i've got yeah, and then it's going to put me in a different mindset coming out and going into a different gym. When it's probably good to have that equipment anyway. Well, yeah, because if I'm tired after work, I can go and do a workout at home. Yeah, because that's what my plan is. Once I move to a bigger house, it's just literally... oh yeah, no, I'm definitely going to add on to the equipment that I've got. I mean, I'm lucky because I've still got the lat pull down and the low row. There isn't a lot that I can't do. So it's just with a few yeah. attachments, like I can overcome anything the only thing i haven't really got is like a chest cable but then that's that's one of them isn't it that's more of an isolation exercise and i want to try and build on the mass yeah. rather than just keep isolating muscles yeah that's kind of like what you can do at a gym is kind of just after you do your ice um your compound lifts is just do a bit of isolation isn't it that's it yeah um and the, the other point i was gonna discuss was um kind of it's probably before lockdown but kind of kind of how you deal with kind of the prep of your food training and everything else because um oh, for a dad you work as a roofer it was a roofer yeah. wasn't it no yeah i'm a roofer 
Um, and you were you were you are a full time parent of your eldest son, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, I wrote it down, and I'm like, I'm sure I'm right. And then no, my no, mind's no, telling right. me before to I'm be like, fair, my eldest loves getting involved with the food prep. Like yeah. he's banging. He'll he'll peel my spuds for me. He'll yeah. help me weigh out everything. But because I'm very regimented in when I start something and I'm obsessed with numbers and figures because I know you can just say, right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get in 4,000 calories. Yeah. I could do that. Easy. I could just go and eat a whole cheesecake. I could go and eat a pizza, but there's well, no I remember what everyone was like at 24 seven McDonald's exactly. straight after training muffins and shit. And I could, and I could do that because I was lean, but then the, like, the majority of the time I'd still eat my high protein, my high carb and then yeah, I'd have my yeah. low carb. My high, but that's all. And that's everybody's in like, is different. You have to go on your own body types. I mean, I spent eight hours the other day doing my diet and then I did I all your diet. paperwork and I was thinking, I don't even do mine on paper and shit anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, but I do because like, so if it tells me that I need so many proteins, so many fats, so many carbs, then I might need like 60, 30, 10 specifically. Yeah. But you try getting that specifically on six meals, it doesn't happen. So then you've got to have some left over. Then you're yeah. going to have some under. Then you've got to take it to the other meal. And then you've got to. Take, but that's where it is. Preparation is key, and that was from my time in the army. Yeah. You 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 prep you prep to win. The same as like all the people who go in and do the shows and smash it and come out with the first, the second, the third. They are preparing to win. If you don't prepare for anything, even in life, then you're defeating yourself already. And yeah. Luckily, I've got a lot of time on my hands. But even when <laughs> with being, even with being a dad and working and stuff, I make time for things like that in the evening. Yeah, because you you always normally did it on, on the weekends anyway, didn't you? When you weren't yeah. Working. So I used to prep from a Wednesday to a Sunday and Sunday to a Wednesday. And I don't care what any food expert says because according to them, I should be dead. But it doesn't because food does keep, and it depends what you're eating. And as long as you separate your meats and don't have it all stacked up together, it's absolutely fine. And I've got two fridge freezers, and then I've got another one outside. So I just... Yeah, the, only, the only thing that I've ever found what goes weird after a few days is rice. Yeah, so how I get around that is I just buy microwave rice. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's, you can that's, get that's, that's what loads of people I know pack. do is... I went into Lidl the other day. I said, right, we're on lockdown. Have these restrictions been lifted? He was like, yeah, he goes, you can buy as much as you want. So I walk out with just boxes and boxes of rice. I'm, like, I'm not <laughs> buying three packs and coming back every day. My office is just full of boxes and boxes of rice. Yeah. Because you're right. Rice is the only thing that, and you can still eat it, but it is nah, oh, it's, it's nasty. It's just, it's just weird, isn't it, after a while? Yeah. I'm sure that's, yeah. I'm sure that's the only thing which is touch and go with making you a bit ill. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, it's, it goes down to the containers that I buy for my prep. They're all separated, and then once the air seals on it, it, it seals those separate compartments, yeah. and none of the, so it just works. And then I've got my food bag as well that stays refrigerated for fourteen hours. So like, I take that. I took it when I went down for my daily exercise last night. I took my food with me down and sat on the Pebble Ridge and ate my food down there. Yeah. End of the day, you're not eating for enjoyment. You're eating for necessity. Yeah. Like, and once you've got that mindset of it's just numbers. And sometimes it's horrible. Like today I was eating, I was like, oh, plain mints again. This is delightful. And then I was like, oh, I can add 50 grams of passata to this to try and make it a bit more moist. Yeah. And it's just little things like that. But it's, it's dependent how far you want to go with it. And I, I, like, I like my body type is I like to stay lean anyway. But yeah. I'm obviously trying to grow. And that's what I am now. I'm, I'm growing and I'm putting on the mass. But I'm never going to just explode. Like a lot of people will just like off season or whatever. They just put on stacks and stacks of weight. And then they look like the Michelin man and then they cut it all down. And yeah. then there's impacts of decrease. That's not healthy on your body anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of that's what I <laughs> that's kind of what I did for quite a while. But I think I've accumulated enough muscle so I don't get too fat now. Yeah, and that's it. But then I just prefer to just do lean bulks. Yeah. Like, but it, it but depends on your body type, doesn't it, really? Because exactly. like I could probably stay I could probably stay a lot lower calories. Yeah. But like, it always kind of works for me to get that bit fat. Exactly, yeah. Because I've always been that little bit of fat. I've not really been that lean all the time. No. 
So it's yeah. like saying to my body, you've got to stay here, even though you never stay there. Yeah. Whereas my body's used to having that little bit of fat. Mm -hmm. And then it can stay there. Yeah, that's it. So it's like, I don't know. I think some people kind of think that you're... So, well, like, you, like you've seen all my paperwork and everything. Since I've done that, I've had hundreds of messages on Instagram. Like, can you do my diet? I want your diet. I want your plan. And I was like, right, that's fine. But it ain't going to work for you because it's tailored to me. Yeah. Literally, you can... Because uh, obviously, I'm qualified and, as a personal trainer and everything. Yeah. You can literally get 10 people. If you're a good per person to do diets, there would be 10 different diets. It would be 10 different diets without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, unlike a lot of people, they do the same diet. Yeah, they just go generic, but it doesn't work. And then they wonder why their clients are putting on weight or they're yeah. not reaching their goals. And or they the just say, starts. I'll just do keto to lose weight. <laughs> when you just lose water, because your muscles go flat as well, if you've got muscles. Exactly. Because you've got no carbs or nothing. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, I've lost all the weight. No energy. But there's nothing got no to energy. me. I've got and no energy. I've got the lifts no... in the gym either. And then you, you, your, your bone density is more sensitive. So then because you've got no carbs, because you've got no energy, because you've got no glycogen stores, your, bo your bones and that just break down. So when you're trying to lift as heavy as you were in the gym on these keto diets, you're doing you more damage than good. Yeah. Nowhere near. You might be able to for a bit. Yeah, I'd like to see someone yeah. try. <laughs> but yeah that's what i've i've seen i've seen a few people and um kind of they've spoken to me and they're like oh i'm doing a keto diet and i'm like oh let me know how long you last on it i'm not going to tell exactly. you my opinion let me know how long you last on it and let me know if you have a sensitivity to carbs afterwards exactly and they were like what well, and I was like, I'm not going to give my opinion until you've done it. Yeah, then, because then they'll do all well, this, but then they'll go back on carbs and reintroduce it. And then all of a sudden, they'll be like, well, why have I put all this weight back on? Where's this come from? Yeah, or more. And they've <laughs> yeah. probably like, um, got very sensitive to carbs. So some exactly. stuff that they could have before might make their stomach and their digestion really crap. Yeah. Because they've took it out. This is what I was worried about about prep is taking like milk and duck butter and cheese and everything out. You have to slowly put it in again because yep. otherwise your stomach's like, oh, I ain't had no dairy, I ain't had no milk, I ain't had nothing for ages. Exactly. You can end up with an intolerance to, to that. So it's the same yeah. as carbs. You take things away, you can get you can cause problems by taking it away. Just being like, yeah, I'll just take it all out. Yeah, but you can't, that's why you have to taper. I mean, even in the medical industry, you don't just do that in medical profession. Like even no, with no addicts, one ever you, have, that. You, have to, you have to taper things out of your body. Otherwise, you can do serious harm. Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's, it's like everything, really, isn't it? That's but then, it. But then that's because I think people are in that mindset of, I want it now. If I do this, it's quicker. Yeah. And then they think, oh, I can, I, I've lost the weight I've lost. Yeah. Even if you make it there with no energy, <laughs> no, no strength, oh, no feel f flat as anything. As soon as you put things back in, you put weight massively back on, your water's just going to go everywhere. So that's going to be well, this is it. And then you're going to look like a potato. Yeah. On a waterbed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that's kind of about it, really. I didn't really want to yeah. go too long. No, nah, no, nah, that's cool, man. Thank you for coming on anyway. I'm going to. No, I appreciate stop the it. Thanks for having me on. Now.